Good morning, uh, dear colleagues, dear friends. Uh, I'm very pleased that uh, today uh, uh, we are organizing the second uh, Balkan Provider Forum. Uh, I'm very pleased that uh, last year it was uh, the first edition and it was uh, some kind like a test uh, and it was very successful. I now today I believe that this uh, Balkan Regional Provider Forum will be tradition. Every year we will have opportunity to discuss on different topics. Uh, let's start the the event uh, as it is usual with some technical information. Uh, you have on the screen uh, the webinar will be recorded and will be uh, uh, available after the event. You can activate the real-time English subtitles by clicking on the closed caption on the control bar. Um, we have, uh, uh, I'm very grateful that we had the opportunity because of ESPD, uh, we have an interpretation in Macedonian. So by clicking on the interpretation button, you can uh, follow the whole event on Macedonian uh, language. You can uh, post your question in the chat box and uh, you will receive response uh, in the section uh, question and answers. I would like to ask you to mute your microphones uh, uh, during the presentations. Uh, and uh, when you want to ask question, then you can use chat box. That is the technical issue. Um, I'm very pleased that uh, we have uh, uh, um, a good number of uh, registered people, uh, more than uh, 19 it was yesterday. Um, I'm also, I'm very happy obviously today uh, because uh, we are going to talk about uh, some uh, a topic on uh, early childhood intervention services are very important uh, for uh, development. От што зависи добро состојбата, квалитетот на здравјето, учењето и социјоемоционалното однесување на поединците од најраното возраст. Ке имаме можност да слушнеме презентации од колегите од Албанија. Еглантина е ги представи нивните добри практики, нивното искуство. Потоа ќе имаме гости од Грција, Мирела, ќе ни го пренесе нивното искуство. По Грција ќе ги слушнеме колегите од Хрватска, Ана од Малидум, ќе го представи нивното искуство. Потоа се префрламе на Бугарија, Борислава ќе ни го ќе ни ја представи својата интересна презентација и на крај се враќаме назад во Скопје и ќе ја слушнеме презентацијата на колешката Маргарита од Оторете ги Призор. Настанот ќе го модерира Агапи. Thank you, everybody. Good morning, dear participants, dear colleagues, Irene, Adriana, Vasilka. It is a great honor for me to present this panel. So for the Balkan region, including my country, Greece, of course, the effort that service providers have put to highlight through their exemplary practice and work the importance of early... ...pleasure to present colleagues from five ECI services, as Vasilka just said, from a across the Balkan region, which will focus on issues related to fostering inclusion of children with disabilities, secure a smooth transition to other educational phase, provide innovative tools for support staff, and empower families and address keys related to the COVID uh, period that we all have faced, uh, which was very challenging. Thanks to ESPD, we had the chance to network, exchange good practices, and empower ourselves to our work joining efforts with the Republic Center of Support of Persons with Intellectual Disability for ACA today. Today's event will helpfully provide inspiration and knowledge 
for further development of ECI services in the Balkan region and beyond, and hopefully make this year uh, an ECI year. So I will directly introduce you to the first presenter. Uh, the technical uh, information has just been uh, said by, have been uh, introduced by Vasilka. So I would just, uh, I would like to tell you just that uh, you can put your questions in the Q&A or the chat and uh, we will have time uh, at the end of the of the panel but also in in uh, between the the presentations if something is uh, related to specific uh, presenter so i would like to give the floor to eglantina Shlaku from albania from help the life association uh, for for her presentation thank you very much Thank you, Agapi. Thank you, Vasilika and the SPD for hosting us uh, in this event, in this very important event. Uh, I will uh, today introduce the practice of Health Life Association uh, on early child intervention uh, practices in Albania. Uh, first, I'd like to stress that in, that, uh, in Albania, early child intervention, there is no uh, uh, national practice uh, uh, from the government of uh, early child intervention, just uh, there are uh, uh, cases or practices by uh, NGOs who, uh, that uh, have tri are trying to, to support children with disabilities since at their early age. Uh, today, uh, I'm going to represent uh, one uh, practice that is related to, to early child intervention, but focusing on uh, preschool children and their inclusion in the in the preschool system. Uh, Health Association is established in 1998 and provides programs that accompany the person with disability uh, the whole cycle of uh, the life. Uh, we uh, our main programs are focused on early child intervention program from for children zero to six years old, community based services uh, where we provide psychosocial support for children from six to 21 years old, and independent living program for uh, youths above 21 years old. Uh, the SE, um, SE practice of Health and Life Association in Albania is focused on a coordinating system among key components of child development, which are family, early education institutions, and service providers. Uh, since five years, uh, we have supported 151 children with development challenges in four cities of Albania, in Tirana, Duras, Vlora, and Kukas. Uh, mainly, we have been, uh, <clears throat> uh, provided assessment of skills and needs, drafting the intervention programs, providing services in the natural environment, home, nursery, kindergarten, uh, and the SE center two times per week, and also ongoing evaluations and follow up. Uh, as we mentioned, uh, one of the key components of uh, this system is the family. Uh, as the family, uh, we uh, we we is very important that, that the family because the family to, has to encourage a healthy and motivated environment for child development. Our experience on the family was focused on assessing the family the dynamics, information, and awareness raising, specific training uh, based on family and child needs psychological uh, counseling mainly focused on parents siblings and grandparents because the family our families are uh, some of uh, the families uh, are composed uh, with uh, by grandparents and that they have a big influence on the child development and also ongoing technical assistance uh, as uh, our representation for today is focused on the uh, educational inclusion, uh, we uh, because uh, we uh, we 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 have assessed uh, that the education and inclusion have a great impact on the child uh, uh, development and also by our experience we have noticed that uh, uh, a small number of children uh, are integrated in educational system. Uh, the importance of this cooperation uh, is based on uh, improving the quality of early education practices for children with development disabilities, providing equal opportunities for children with disabilities, 
uh, on <laughs> and inclusive preschool programs and also avoiding stigma, discrimination, neglect and limited access of children with disabilities to preschool programs and professional support services. <clears throat> Uh, early child education is a crucial factor that has an important impact for children's healthy development. Uh, in order to examine and analyze the obstacles to supporting inclusion and providing effective early education programs for children with disability in Albania, Health to Life had carried out a study focusing on teachers and other staff of early education institutions uh, for children from zero to six years old. On this study, there were 377 participants uh, that uh, took part in this study with focus groups and online questionnaires, uh, which were mainly uh, uh, focused on heads of preschool program institutions, teachers of uh, children from zero to six years old, assistant teachers and social workers and psychologists. Uh, the data from this uh, uh, that shown from this uh, uh, questionnaire uh, was related to the number of children with development delays uh, that were in classroom. Uh, 23 uh, 23.5 percent of the children have the difficult uh, difficulties in gross and motor skills. 52.3% uh, were reported by the teachers that they have language and communication challenges. Uh, behavioral disorders and 29% of the children that are enrolled in this uh, school, uh, in these uh, kindergartens, have development delays. Sorry, I have a problem with the... Oh, okay. Uh, also, 38% uh, of the teachers and other staff report that they have one child with development delay uh, challenges in their classes. 19.5% uh, of the teachers and other staff report that they have two children with development challenges in their classes. 14% of the teachers and other staff report that they have two children with development delay challenges in their classes. And 11% of the teacher and other, other staff report that they have four children with development challenges. As, as I stated uh, uh, at the beginning, we do not have uh, uh, statistics on the number of children that they are enrolled in uh, inclusive classes or in kindergartens because uh, uh, because of this uh, miss of uh, statistics, we we presume that the number of the children uh, that are uh, following the uh, the the preschool uh, the, the preschool system is much more uh, higher than uh, the real one that is reported by the governmental institutions. Uh, also, uh, this, uh, this study shows some of the uh, obstacles uh, of uh, inclusiveness of children with disabilities, which indicate that the preschool programs lack specific working tools, which are learning materials and sus uh, sustainable facilities for children with disability, uh, for working with children with disabilities, lack of support education staff, supportive teachers, lack of adequate cooperation with parents, lack of knowledge and supportive techniques of teachers to support support inclusion, lack of inclusiveness settings, uh, inadequacy of education programs for the specifics of children with disability. The teachers demonstrated the need to improve the level of support to children with disability in early education system by making appropriate intervention to create high quality learning experiences and inclusive classrooms. Uh, Taking in consideration all the, the findings from this study, our practice to support inclusiveness of children with disabilities in early institutions was focused on uh, three directions. Uh, based on the findings of this study, we have drafted the, the manuals uh, of training for teachers and other staff, which were two training manuals for strengthening specialist capacities uh, composed by five modules covering two age groups of the children. The manuals were focused uh, were separated from the uh, group age zero to three years old and from the group age of the children uh, three to six years old. 
which were drafted by Health and Life Association expertise. Also, uh, the, after that, we have uh, uh, organized training sessions for teachers and other staff. There were four, uh, 503 specialists of 93 early education institutions in Tirana, Kukos, Blora, and Duras, which were par participated in, the, in these training sessions, uh, aiming the strengthening of their capacities through 50 training sessions organized. Also, uh, these uh, trainings were uh, followed by in-service technical assistance provided to teachers and other staff. There were uh, 77 teachers of early educational institutions who, which have received technical assistance on how to adapt and improve their educational programs with uh, 75 children, uh, 77, uh, 57 ch uh, children with development challenges, sorry. These are some photos from the activities. So this was uh, our practice and the result of our intervention might be covered in uh, 151 children with development delay, uh, challenges who are supported through a coordinated system of early intervention composed by the key factors of uh, child development, which is family, early education institutions, and service providers. Also, uh, uh, the, the, these children improve their individual capacities as result as a result to inclusion in the early years of age. Uh, family, uh, they increase their level of information and acceptance of the child with development uh, disabilities, and also they acquire the skills and ability support to support children in their uh, um, efforts to overcome development challenges. Early education institutions, there were uh, 503 teachers uh, and other staff of uh, 93 early education system developed their level of knowledge, skills, motivation, and self-efficiency in identifying difficulties and supporting the child in early education institution system settings. Also, they increased their capacities about the effective approaches, techniques, practices to prevent and manage inappropriate behaviors of the children. And also service provider, uh, our focus was with uh, service providers, uh, the coordinating, uh, coordinating the resources, tools, and appropriate to identification, referral, and orientation in specialized support services that respond to the needs of the children with disabilities from the first years of age. I, ha I want to, to, to stress some of the uh, uh, of, of the uh, of what has to be done in Albania from the government and from our uh, our, our, our organizations of uh, civil society uh, in order to 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 further the uh, early child intervention uh, program uh, in Albania the early. So establish the structure of early child model with clear protocols and standards, which is very, very important. As I mentioned at the beginning, in Albania, we do not have a national ASIP model, which can be followed by uh, NGOs and institutions. There we have only sporadic cases like uh, our practice that I uh, um, introduced today and also other organizations that have taken the initiative to provide uh, early child intervention uh, programs in Albania. And that's, for that, we think uh, we uh, say that it's very, very important that a national uh, model has to be established uh, and drafted in order to be implemented correctly by all the service providers and other institutions. Also, encouraging a monitoring system to avoid the provision of informal services, which is very important because uh, some of service providers, they do not provide um, uh, uh, a model which is clear and it, which is uh, with uh, set with protocols and uh, standards. Uh, increase the uh, allocated budget for service uh, for Etsy service by the government institutions uh, for sure. Uh, information and education of the family of children with disabilities, which is very very important because the family is one of the main components on uh, further the, the development of the of the children at this uh, early age because they know their children better better and also they can help the child inside the, the family routine. Uh, carry out a national study 
uh, on the number of children with uh, disabilities and their diagnosis, which the, the, the data are very, very important, the statistics, because based on these statistics, we can also plan and uh, the intervention and also uh, set the, the, the costs uh, for this uh, service. Also providing a specialized service for family focused support and ensuring ongoing support to build and sustain capacity for early education institution staff in order to facilitate the process of inclusion of children with uh, disability and other with development challenges in the uh, system of uh, education. Uh, this was my presentation for today. Uh, I'd like to thank everyone once again for uh, being part of this uh, event. Thank you. Thank you, Glatina, for your presentation oh, on time. It was a bit, uh, <laughs> long, huh? oh, okay. It was just on time. Uh, okay, okay thank so you. Uh, you have uh, pointed out some very important issues uh, on inclusiveness challenges and, of course, the need for central uh, legal framework. Uh, and I will give the floor now to my colleagues from Greece, the, um, uh, from Theotokos, Mirela Yanakopoulou, Head of Early Intervention and Pre-Vocational Pre Training Department, and Mary Ange Windershoven, Head of Mental Health and Social Care Services, uh, for their presentation. Okay, thank you, Agapi. Uh, thank you all for the invitation. It's an honor for us to participate in this forum. Uh, me and my colleague, Marianne, uh, we will present you the ACI program in the community for children and families, which uh, we implement at the Tokos Foundation. Uh, we believe that working on the prevention of developmental disabilities is crucial for young children and their families. In Greece, all of the signs of the potential developmental delay are obvious early enough. Valuable time is lost until the families referred for early intervention program. So, uh, in order to prevent and detect children at risk and encourage families to seek for specialized intervention, we organize this project on the following way. We work on three tiered levels of prevention. The first tier is the primary prevention level, which aims to raise awareness in the community. The second tier uh, is the secondary prevention level, which aims the early identification in the kindergartens. At the tertiary prevention level, we provide assessment and intervention services for preschoolers aged two to six years old and their families at the ECI Department of the Focus Foundation. This program, uh, we have to say that is a cooperation of the Tokos Foundation and Municipality of Ilion and Kamatero, which started in 2015. The, the program is aimed, at, is aimed at children aged two to five and their families in 12 kindergartens of the Municipality of Ilion, while in 2019, eight kindergartens of the Municipality of Kamatero joined the program. So far, uh, 1,605 children and families have received assessment and counseling services from specialized therapists. The program was funded from 2017 to 2019 by the region of Attica. Now, the objectives of the program. The main goal of the program is early detection and intervention in the community for preschool children and their families in order to, first of all, to prevent developmental delays and emotional difficulties. Secondly, enhance children's overall development. Thirdly, to empower the families. In addition, to support teachers into kindergarten schools and finally, to achieve inclusion into the school and in other social environments. Now, uh, we will present 
to you the methodology used for this program, which was made out of six phases, uh, as you see. Uh, I'm going to talk about the first three phases and my colleague Marianne will present you the other three. Phase number one, awareness. In order to obtain awareness to the program, we accomplished meetings with the municipalities. Marilena, excuse me to interrupt. Uh, there is a request from the interpreters to speak a little bit slower if, if, it's, pros if it's possible. Thank you. Okay. Okay. No, no, no worries, Mirella. It was for you, Agapia, when you when you talk. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. No worries, Mirella. It's all good. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. So, in order to obtain awareness to the program, we accomplished meetings with the municipalities, meetings with municipality scientific staff, child psychologists, child psychiatrists, speech and occupational therapists social workers, workers and pediatricians, meetings with educational staff of kindergartens, conducted uh, presentations to parents and kindergarten school teachers in order to increase awareness about the usefulness of the program and provide training on how to implement the questionnaires. Phase two screening. Parents that agreed to participate had to fill in the following questionnaires. Eichenbach child behavior checklist, one for parents and one for teachers. This is a questionnaire which concerns adaptive and maladaptive behavior. Modified checklist for autism in toddlers, MCHAT and the speech development questionnaire that was developed by the SLT department of Theotokos Foundation. Following the questionnaire's analysis, we came up with three groups. Group number one, children with no difficulties. Group number two, mild difficulties in development and or parenting. And group number three, children with an indication of risk for developmental delay or psychosocial and emotional difficulties. For children that uh, were uh, in group two, we proposed their parents to participate in uh, parent information groups held at day nurseries or kindergarten schools. And for children with indication of risk, group three, we advise the families for further assessment. In phase three, uh, we conducted assessments at school environment for children at risk, whereas the parents agreed. We used Denver developmental screening test, Anomilo for speech and language screening test, Clinical examination by psychologists, speech therapists, occupational therapists, classroom observation, of course, and cooperation with the educational staff. So uh, I will continue this presentation. After we saw all these children at the school environment, we asked, we invited the parents for a meeting. During this meeting, we first of all gave a verbal report on the child's level of performance during the assessment at the nursery. Uh, we also asked some of uh, information about the family history, some feedback about the development of the child, some feedback about uh, the infant parent interaction and communication styles at home, and if there was any history of mental health uh, difficulties in the family. Uh, we discussed with the parents the, um, the results of the assessments, and then we advised the parents for further assessment only if we thought that these children were at risk. So here uh, in the next uh, slide, you can see the, the proposals we gave to the parents uh, during this uh, meeting. Uh, if there were no difficulties or very mild sign of difficulties, we advised them only a follow up in one year time, and we gave them some advice during this meeting. If there were difficulties in one specific developmental area, we refer them for assessment in public services. With difficulties though, in more than one developmental area, 
we uh, we told them that they could do a diagnosis by the scientific team of the Saratokos Foundation. And if they didn't want to, we uh, refer them for diagnosis through public system. And then we have one last group, which is group four, uh, with children that have signs of psychosocial and emotional difficulties. Uh, these children, we also refer these parents, these families, to public services if they didn't want to um, come to the Theotokos Institute. But we have a department where we do a psychoanalytic infant parent psychotherapy. So uh, these children could also come to our, um, to the, our foundation and have uh, treatments uh, for the difficulties. The children that were diagnosed in Theotokos uh, Foundation were diagnosed by a multidisciplinary team. Uh, uh, they were diagnosed by a developmental pediatrician, a child psychotherapist, a child psychologist, speech and language psychotherapist, uh, therapist, not psycho, occupational therapist, and social worker. And then we come to phase six, which is the last phase, uh, in which if there were difficulties only uh, in speech or um, motor, motor development, we refer these children to speech and occupational therapy, uh, but we told the parents it's good for these children to stay in the mainstream, mainstream school setting. Some of these families were referred to our department in which we do infant parent psychotherapy, and some children were enrolled in the early intervention department of uh, Theotokos Foundation. I will give you some uh, slides now that you can see uh, for people that uh, prefer to see uh, the results. Um, so the first slide is about the number of questionnaires that was analyzed. Uh, the first four years only from 12 uh, child care centers and the last year from 20 child care centers. It's about 350 every year. Um, the next slide, you can see the data analysis of these questionnaires. Like uh, uh, Mirella told you before, we had uh, children where where we, there were no difficulties at all in the questionnaires. This is the blue group. And then there were the children with mild difficulties only, only in, uh, edu in, um, uh, in education or in uh, behavioral difficulties at home with mild difficulties. So these children, we, uh, we didn't see these children. We, 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 we organized some meetings, uh, group meetings with the parents at school. And then we have the last group, the gray group, which are the children that we did screen. So totally of the total uh, of questionnaires that we saw, 1,609, uh, we screened 40% of them, which are 768 uh, children. So the type of difficulties, they do resemble a little bit the last um, uh, presentation that we just heard from Albania. We had a lot of children with 41% uh, with speech difficulties, and we had 34% of the children with behavioral difficulties. But we also had other kind of difficulties like feeding, uh, sleeping, concentration, socialization, attachment. Uh, in total, we can see that there were about 7% uh, of the population had developmental difficulties, so difficulties that were related to speech or motor difficulties or um, difficulties in autistic spectrum disorder. And we had 8% in total of the children that had some uh, psychosocial and emotional difficulties. So in total, we detected in this program, which is a prevent, prevention program, a research prevention program, we detected about 15% of all the children that uh, were enrolled in the, in, the, uh, pro, in the program, which are about 256 children that were uh, screened, uh, referred, assessed, diagnosed, or uh, treated in the last four, five, uh, five years. So we still, we don't want to stop here. We still have further th thoughts. Uh, we want to increase communities awareness on cognitive language, motor and sensory issues that affect children's development. We would like to do some group, group training for educational staff to prepare some handbooks on, on the methodology, like we used it, training parents and training educational staff. And we would like to implement the program to other municipalities in Athens. And as you see, we uh, achieved that uh, last year uh, during the COVID crisis, which was quite amazing. <laughs> we were surprised by that. So thank you for listening to us and to our program.
if you have any more questions, we are here to answer them. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mirella, Marianne. Uh, it was a very detailed presentation, uh, highlighting also the prevention and early detection importance in providing uh, the correct, the appropriate services to the children. Uh, we will now proceed with the third presentation from Malidom. Uh, Anna Valitz Potkai will uh, take the floor now. Thank you, Anna. Thank you, Agapi, <laughs> and I'm welcoming you all, and thank you for the invitation to speak in front of Mali Dome today here. Uh, I will start my presentation. Oops, sorry. So today in my presentation, I will talk about uh, strategies and challenges present uh, at early intervention in Croatia. And I will focus mainly on our center also, Mali Dom Zagreb. Um, in Mali, Mali Dom exists for, uh, as a public institution since 2000 uh, and uh, for the last 11 years. But before that, we started as NGO, as a project, as a, also a type of the city council institution. And we developed early intervention program uh, for the last um, uh, 18 to 20 years. Uh, we started uh, with evidence-based research and to make a strong rationale for this program. And when we describe um, the contemporary state of early childhood intervention in Croatia, then I must uh, state what happened just, sorry. Um, hmm. Something, uh, do you see my presentation? Oops. We don't see the whole uh, picture. Mm -hmm. Something, sorry, something just happened. I am having a problem with... Um, maybe you can just today. don't go, don't go full screen. Maybe just let it normally and then we can see it a bit better because okay. now it's like cut in half. Okay, I will just try again, sorry. Yep. This usually doesn't happen, but today it did for some reason. No, it's still it's still cut in half. Okay, still cut in half. Maybe like completely close PowerPoint and then open yes, it. Yes, like I will try to close it again the and then yeah, yeah perfect. Sure. Thanks. Perfect. Mm -hmm. No, no, maybe it, uh, now it's a bit it, better. Is it better? Yeah, now it's good. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. <gasps> Hopefully <laughs> something will not change. So when we are describing the contemporary state of early childhood in uh, Croatia, uh, then uh, it must be emphasized that the picture is very erratic depending upon the region where, in which a family lives and the kind of development disorder that uh, their child has. Early intervention is usually provided to a child with early developmental impairment, developmental risk or developmental difficulties, uh, usually up from the birth to age of three and up to the age of seven the most. But when we are speaking of that, the situation is better in Zagreb, but the far you go to east, then we are lacking in the services. High quality intervention, early intervention program, of course, have clear goals and they base their curriculum on a knowledge of very early development. In the face of this increased intention uh, to early childhood professional development, there is a constant need for efforts to examine what works uh, for whom, within which context and at what cost. 
As I said, mentioned, family from Zagreb region are in a far better position than those living elsewhere, as the majority of both traditional treatment settings, that is med medically based programs and new programs in family environment settings are concentrated in this area. Uh, Malidom Zagreb operates in Croatian capital city of Zagreb and it offers its services throughout the country. Uh, we have developed an early intervention program from ch for children aged from 0 to 3 with disabilities or a high risk of developing disabilities and we are trying to uh, concretize our programs to family center approach and uh, mostly we are practicing this in child, child's home. The method is ongoing and individualized for each family and we are funded by the local government and also we have an agreement with the Ministry of Social Welfare for providing listed services. Uh, we are providing uh, early intervention pro, uh, service to 60 children and their families each year in the Zagreb area and to an additional 150 children and families nationally through transdisciplinary assessment and counseling. Overall, we offer uh, regular services per year and uh, additionally through counseling and assessment. So maybe around 300 children are uh, being covered through our program per year. We are establishing collaborative partnership with families and um, we offer services that uh, try to provide uh, necessary conditions for a child to fully develop his or her potential. Uh, based on the knowledge and experience obtained through working with families and children, uh, Malidom had an opportunity to be a part of the expert group alongside with um, UNICEF and uh, partners from four uh, hospitals and with uh, uh, also uh, experts from the city council and ministry of social welfare and we had an opportunity to build an early interventional model uh, we tried to base our model on the system components of Michael Gralnik, and uh, maybe for, uh, I'm sure that all of you from literature know that his graph is much more wider and much more spread, but uh, we are very content that we have managed to fulfill all of these uh, boxes from referral, place of access, transdisciplinary assessment, eligibility, uh, referral is made in the hospitals, um, mostly through pediatricians, neonatologists, neuropediatricians, place of access through is at um, our center through transdisciplinary assessment where we are uh, distinguishing the eligibility. The eligibility is the child has to be, of course, from zero to three and have a mi minimum of two criteria of delay in areas uh, through eligibility. We are deciding if a child is entering early intervention program or preventive program, meaning uh, monthly or uh, checkups. We have assessment of family stress and program activities, evaluation and transition planning. What we are missing still are monitoring surveillance and transitions to other system, and I will talk about it uh, later. Uh, old children referred to our center start with the transdisciplinary assessment, which help us to better understand the child's trends and needs and how early intervention can help. Following the assessment, the team discusses with the family uh, priorities and concerns, and together we outline the next uh, steps to answer the specific questions. The model is trend and resource based, and we try to enhance competence and positive functions and decisions are made together with the family, not for them. The model uh, provides services for children in a natural environment that is in the setting in which the child would uh, participate. So the still main struggles are monitoring of the success, surveillance, and of course we have some kind of the problem with the specific programs of, for the children who are not the main candidates but how not to lose them and how to uh, see them regularly and provide them with the support that they need. What is the impact? Uh, 
as to try to do the systematic approach where the whole development of the child needs to be considered rather than a single deficient area alone. And uh, what we have, what we are trying to achieve to uh, make a switch from intertransdisciplinary to transdisciplinary approach, which is considered to be the best practice because it is reducing the confusion for the family by reducing the number of people and disciplines with which they need to interact. It's less intrusive because parents only need to build one key relationship and only one service provider, meaning one expert that is doing home visits. And I think that, that we have successfully achieved it. Uh, this model and our model is uh, addressing learning across the means, recognizing that the child development is interrelated and does not occur in isolation. Uh, to be an, an effective early intervention team member, all experts look beyond their own discipline for insight and strategies that support a child's development. Uh, more children can be served because fewer providers routinely see a child instead of each child receiving direct assessment and intervention, freeing other team members to see other children. It is cost effectiveness if the process is, of course, going well, uh, because the transdisciplinary approach is considered to be around 40% more cost efficient than an interdisciplinary approach. And for example, transdisciplinary play based assessments have been found to take less time to complete uh, than multidisciplinary standardized uh, assessment. Uh, one of the benefits is that uh, it allows, it in fact requires a significant professional development because professional skills and mutual respect are enhanced through the use of this uh, approach and it increases collaboration and communication among team members. In Malidom uh, today, uh, we have in our team of early intervention, 16 members and all team members have uh, many years of experience in working with young children. Uh, 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 for example, to enter in the team of early intervention at Malidom, all experts have to have a minimum of five years of experience working in the area of intervention and working in the field of, of uh, where uh, early childhood education. Over time, our team has faced increasingly complex problems and challenging situations because the children uh, getting into their programs are, that are getting included uh, uh, have more and more complex needs like visual impairments and additional difficulties, hearing motoric problems, intellectual disabilities, complex combinations. So it became too challenging for just one profession. Another major challenge was putting greater emphasis on child's family, including them in the work. So in order to be uh, successful in dealing with all these challenges, it was necessary to increase the level of interaction in the team and to become more than just a group of individuals who address their own task. Awareness grew that we are more effective when each team member shares same goals and uh, objectives. And although we started as a multidisciplinary time some 15 years ago, over time we have gone through transformation to interdisciplinarity with some elements of transdisciplinary approach. And nowadays I'm pretty sure that we are very close to a transdisciplinary team. We have speech therapists, vision therapists, social workers, psychologists, kinesiologists, occupational therapists, uh, interlocutor intervention specialists, physiotherapists, and special education uh, teachers. Key features of this transdisciplinary approach at Malidon uh, is when the team becomes truly transdisciplinary in practice, when members give up or release intervention strategies from their disciplines under the supervision and support of team members, and that is uh, happening uh, spontaneously during um, assessment. The role release, which provides a sharing of expertise, valuing the perspectives, knowledge, and skills to, of those from other disciplines, and team of Malidom is continuously developing an awareness of key features, working on the same language and terminology and familiarity with the uh, role release. And parents are really inte integral partners of the team in all of these steps, through the assessments, through creating individual family service plan and through individual education plan. Uh, maximum effectiveness is of course achieved when parental skills are increased. 
and programs commencing earlier, we are know that uh, are more affecting than those that commence uh, late. Through this approach, uh, we achieved service efficiency because one service provider can more easily establish a relationship with family, a cost effectiveness of the service, less intrusion to the family, less confusion among parents and more coherent intervention plans and comprehensive service delivery which means more services are not necessarily a greater benefit for the child and family. Sometimes less is more because the fragmentation of services is reduced and we can achieve a better uh, parent expert uh, relationship and clearer goals with parents and for the children. How, it looks like, how, it, how does it look like in the numbers? Uh, from Sorry, uh, is someone speaking to me? Yes, uh, it's Arabic. Uh, we have another minute before closing the, the presentation. Okay, uh, we will conclude. Uh, when we are speaking about the numbers, uh, as you see, number of the families, expert projects in education, although we have only 17 experts, uh, uh, these are the number of the families through the years that we have covered. And also, uh, I will skip to another side. Uh, through our funding, we are funded by the local social welfare and we have a contract with Minister of Social Welfare and a budget with local government, but we also have our own funds because we have education center and we provide trainings and in-service training in the region and also through the projects. Our outlook is that we are now under the law social welfare. We have established referral to a social worker and hospital. Children age at entrance is now at around three months, 60% of them, and 65% of the children are preterms from 23 weeks to 34, 20% from perinatal traumas, 10% developmental delays, and 5% different syndromes. Of course, we still have some challenges, no legal framework to provide referral and transition from health providers to uh, early intervention service provider, lack of coordination among social welfare, education and health agencies, monitoring and outcome modulations, and of course adapting to COVID-19. But I think that we have successfully adapted because on last year, only two months, we were virtually uh, doing early intervention and we are now only live. These are the same challenges at Malidon that are being successfully also concluded. Anna. So, thank you all. Uh, and if you'll help questions, I will be in the chat. Thank you. Thank you very much, Anna. Uh, uh, we, I would like to highlight from your presentation that uh, we need networking with medical community and also the community in general in order to create a model for ACI. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. a successful one and also that uh, you have mentioned the uh, terms like transdisciplinary uh, approach holistic development transdisciplinary teams that are major uh, conditions for uh, that are more likely to lead to inclusiveness of both families and the children with disabilities and also for applying the appropriate individualized uh, solution to the children so thank you very much. And I would like now to pass the floor for, uh, to um, Borislava Chekerva from uh, Caridom. Welcome, the floor, floor is yours, Borislava. Hello, thank you for this invitation. Just to share my presentation. Did you see my first slide? Yes. Okay. So, first of all, I would like to thank Cherkezova and I'm here on behalf of uh, Karin Dom. I'm Director Advocacy Training and uh, Partnerships at Karin Dom and I'm very glad to be here with all of you. And uh, based on the last presentation, I would like to highlight uh, that our presentation will, will be focused
Karin Dom, I would like to, to say in some words, Karin Dom is situated in Varna. It's a big uh, regional city on the Black Sea. Uh, we have 25 years history and uh, we support uh, annually 300 families uh, uh, with children from zero to seven. During COVID-19, it's uh, I would like to highlight that we didn't stop to provide our services. Uh, even though we, we provide these services online or in hybrid vari uh, uh, variant, online plus face-to-face -face or switching uh, online to face-to-face. -face. Uh, mainly our, um, our AC services are provided via mobile, mobile consultation at home, uh, on playground, in kindergarten. During the COVID, we provide uh, these services via online consultation. Um, just uh, to, to give uh, a little bit the, the local context in Bulgaria, the last year uh, come into force the new, uh, the, the new law for social services. It, this law gave the framework for work for uh, all ECI services. At the moment, um, in very dynamic situation, uh, political and in COVID context, uh, uh, the government together with UNICEF and uh, leading uh, organization in ECI are drafting the, the first version of ECI model. What was the main lesson learned for Karin Doma for last year? This, this, this was, uh, this was uh, a year of testing our AC model. Of support during the pandemic and social, social isolation, one thing was for sure, the family, the parents are the main stars in child development and child well-being in such type of crisis and uh, um, like this pandemic. We, uh, what our team already know is that the family-oriented approach that underpins our social services is really resilient in times of pandemic and social uh, yeah? I don't know if it's in purpose, but I don't see the, we don't see the slides moving, so we are still in the first slide of your presentation. Sorry, sorry. So maybe you can uh, give a few seconds to each slide just to... Moment. Did you see at the moment? Just the first one. Just the first one. Hmm. At the moment? No, no, still not. Now we see. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, I understand what, where is the problem. Sorry. So uh, the main lesson learned for our team was that no, really the family is the, uh, the real style for child development and child well-being during pandemic and such type of crisis. Uh, our, the chosen approach of our team is to build partnership and to empower parents from the very beginning when the family comes in our AC services. And uh, this approach helps us to transform to uh, our AC services in online environment during last year. Um, in fact, the parents help us to, to keep the progress and the stimulation of the child development in a time of social isolation indirectly through online consultation, lectures and training for parents, we did it. If I should summarize the main lesson learned uh, during COVID for our uh, as an AC provider, uh, we would like to stress three, 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 lesson, uh, three lessons. First of all, uh, we, we, built, we built our division what type of uh, AC model work in such type of isolation. In general, all, uh, all of us know that the AC model empower and engage parents with knowledges and uh, to work and support the children at home in natural environment. In time of pandemic and social iso uh, iso isolation, it's more uh, important. It's more important um, to meet not only the anti-epidemic measures, but also to, to find a model that is uh, effective for the parent and the child in the new context, and give them tips, knowledge, how to keep this progress and go further. Uh, for us in Karin Dom, the effective model uh, can be described with two two things: 
this approach is family centered and uh, this approach is with the right uh, and proper virtual tools in relevant and convenient way uh, for the child and the parents. The second lesson is that the effective model in such type of situation should start with the understanding of the new circumstance of the family. The condition for all in such type of situation are very dy dynamic and it's recommended to revise and check regularly uh, what is the condition of the family. We did it uh, uh, through, the, through the parents meeting and uh, weekly, weekly meeting with the team. After one year of online consultation and support, most of our families recognize the online model as an option that enriches the opportunities for support. Thanks to the online consultation, the family can continue to work with the child during sickness and vacation. From other side, our team uh, recognized the online consultation as a great opportunity to, to follow up the progress of the child and the family from distance. And last year show us uh, that the online model provide us uh, also a great opportunity for families at, at risk from the remote area where, uh, where the AC services are missing or are too far away. Did you see the next slide? Just to check myself. Okay, thank you. So here on this slide, uh, we are uh, we would like to share some practical outlook how we engage families in ECI online. We brought some some tips. First of all, the design of online uh, model for support or mixed model. Um, I mean here hybrid. We we did it together with the family and based on the uh, on the current family needs. We <clears throat> Sorry. Uh, it's very important here to, to stress that this design we revised three times during the three COVID uh, waves in Bulgaria and based on two surveys among our parents. Secondly, uh, each online consultation was planned from our AC uh, professionals as a parent training. This was the, the different, uh, the, different uh, uh, the main change that we make in planning one such type of uh, consultation. So sorry, my English is not so, so good like my Bulgarian, but hope you understand me. I'm much smarter in Bulgarian. So during this training, we empowered and engaged families through additional efforts for mental health for the parents. Uh, we involve the parents in the decision-making process. Why? Because the tasks uh, are more relevant and more likely to be happen together with the parents. Um, not on uh, at last place, we give relevant small tasks and regular feedback in each um, parent training or to say online consultation. And our team give uh, the given tips from our uh, team were also closely to the family, to the family needs and opportunities. In fact, uh, we can have engaged families in, uh, in online ACI if we empower them with knowledge and confidence. In short, the model of work through the, par uh, through the parent to the child gives independency to the family and the opportunity to maintain and develop the progress of the child not in general only, but even in such type of crisis and uh, time of social isolation and uh, dynamic. Some parents of our uh, even become more confident through this parent training. And of course, when we are speaking uh, for uh, about lesson learned uh, in last year, I would like to, to highlight that the COVID brings us many me mental challenges, or this is the hidden pandemic of the psyche and to give, uh, bring us many uh, stress also for, from the new way of work. For the management and carrying down, a big challenge was to ensure the team well, well-being in terms of fast coming changes, new digital way of work. As a main goal for us was to ensure in first place, the mental health, but also the ability of the team to do its jobs in balance with the responsibilities at home, parallel to work, take care and study with their own children. On the slide, you can see our main activities in this direction. I will not uh, give attention on them. 
but I would like to highlight that thanks to, to team care during the pandemic, we successfully transform our model in online version. And looking ahead based on our um, experience in last year and lesson learned, our team plan and provide still training packages for parents in ECD fields, prepare materials for parents uh, to work at home with children. Uh, another thing um, and direction um, is that we collect all digital materials for parents and professionals created in last year. Here I mean video lectures, uh, user guides, materials, uh, digital materials to work with the children at home. And these materials soon we will launch in uh, one digital library. Hope you will receive the news from us. Uh, and something very important. In time of crisis, uh, uh, it's even more important to work with, um, with the local, local government in order to make the ECD and TCI uh, problems priority policy area. In time of crisis, the children with special needs and their, par their parents become even more vulnerable. Uh, just to mention that at, at the moment in Bulgaria are coming new elections and the community of all NGOs and provider of ACI and ACD services have united in campaign uh, with one main target, the leading parties to recognize and include the topics, I mean the current uh, topics of early childhood development intervention in their programs. This is our last advocacy campaign. And of course, uh, speaking about advocacy and policy. Our... Uh, but before this, I would like to say that the last year was a great learning experience for each ECI model on national level. No matter the fact that many of us uh, working in uh, countries that the, this ECI model is not legal yet or is preparing at the moment. After one year of COVID, social isolation, everything is changed, the environment, family, social services. Uh, all, uh, all of us have new needs and problems for solving in ECI. It's time to, to look back for feedback from service providers and their, uh, their customers and parents. This is the reason to bring the attention of the policymaker on four topics to rethink the ECI model, the ECI structure. And here you can see on the slide. On first place, uh, I, uh, we think that it's time to observe the new post pandemic context because the pandemic had different impact in social, educational and health sector. Uh, it suggests, of course, and different needs of families in and ECI providers. Based on this observation or study, can be prepared a recovery plan for ECI as mix of services with focus family. And it's good this plan to be prepared with all involved institution for ECI and ECD. I mean, institution from educational, social and health sector. And after one year, as I mentioned, many ACI providers here in Bulgaria and their families recognize the online model as an additional option or option to have access from, re from remote areas to ACI services. So this need uh, can motivate the validation of one hybrid ECI model. And of course the validation requires to be revised the, the, the national ECI model and standard. In conclusion, because I, I see the time is going very fast. We have to close. We have yes, to close. The I would like to, to say something. The online model is not a panacea. It can complement and enrich uh, the ECI model on organizational and national level. The last year gave us many different lessons, but the most important for each of us is to rethink the current ECI model on organizational on national level and even on EO level. And to be sure that uh, for on organizational level, I speak here, the team work really family focused. This is the line for sustainable support. The other important lesson is to look 
regularly for parental feedback. This is the way to shape service model in patient convenient way and con effective way in time of pandemic and social isolation. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Boris Lava, for your presentation. Uh, we can see across all presentations the same uh, message uh, at the end that we need centralized uh, models that are that really reflect the need of uh, families to be introduced uh, and uh, involved uh, very actively. Uh, your presentation was very important because it's related to this very challenging period of COVID. And these uh, raise questions about uh, uh, moving from uh, life uh, physical presence to families and children to a more uh, digitalized approach, which uh, reveals issues uh, linked to having spe specialized uh, digital skills, both parents and uh, families, and also how a severe disability can be approached online. So these are things that we may be able to discuss in the Q&A session uh, next, uh, in, the, in the next minutes. And now I would like, thank you very much for your presentation. Now I would like to give the floor to, uh, to the open the windows of North Macedonia to Margarita Gulebska. So Margarita, the floor is yours. Thanks. Thank you, Agapi. I want to thank at the beginning the organizer for inviting me to participate on this uh, event, on this forum. Uh, my presentation, uh, it will be uh, very similar to the presentation of Borislava as I'm presenting uh, the online support we provide as a service for children with disabilities in the period of pandemic. Uh, at the beginning, I want to uh, at the beginning, uh, sorry, <laughs> I want to shortly to uh, present uh, Open the Windows Association. Uh, uh, it is a, a service provider offering services for assistive technology. Um, we are active for 15 years um, um, and we are especially active in the field of education. Uh, but uh, when the pandemic came, uh, digitalization, uh, digitalization of people's everyday lives um, uh, sorry the digitalization came uh, sooner than uh, we expected. Margarita, I think we lost. Con we're we're having a an issue with the connection, or is it me? Do you hear me? Now we do. Okay. Uh, most of the organization, as we heard, um, it shows that my internet connection is unstable. But proud, do you hear me? Yes, we we hear you now. Okay. Uh, most of the organization were uh, quick uh, and transferred their services online, as we heard Borislava described in her presentation. But um, 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 the organization really uh, paid attention to managing and monitoring their processes to be more efficient, to get better results. So um, uh, the need For creating a distance learning platform was to allow uh, uh, continuously to give service provision to children with disabilities in the time of the pandemic, to support and assist the children in their development, support parents in order to access distance learning resources, provide children with access to innovative services to enhance a continuous advancement. Um, we had luck, uh, one company to approach us at the beginning of the pandemic and to uh, give us a resource that we can use uh, so we can digitalize our services. And at the same time, a donor approached us. It was in a one week period. So um, one organization, one donor and one company made a product that gives services uh, to 
200 children with disabilities in the entire country and support to 250 uh, parents of children with disabilities. So we designed the platform to manage and monitor uh, to manage and monitor a team of special educators and speech therapists uh, to include all involved people in the service provision with the role they have and connect them with the task they are conducting in real time. All the tasks are presented in a manner that are um, understandable for the user and also to the supervisors to get a clear image of the progress and potential difficulties they are facing. Uh, the platform has a hierarchy in the user roles, gives the opportunity for the supervisors to assign different tasks to different users. So the, the registration is very um, easy. We prepared e-form that uh, we put on our platform. But we have an option if the parent cannot um, fill the platform to call an operator. We have three operators that are receiving that are receiving um, registrations. The specific list of questions help the operators to make an initial needs assessment of the child. Uh, the forms are listed in the web platform and. Uh, the operators uh, read, assess, and assign each child to the appropriate special educator or speech therapist. The operators are using a calendar to see how busy each special educator or speech therapist is uh, and eventually distribute the children. The educators uh, are informed by email and on the web platform that they are assigned to a new beneficiary. After every session, the therapist fills a report inside the user profile of the beneficiary on the progress they made during the, during the session with the children. So we, um, um, nine uh, special educators and two speech therapists um, offer individual support for computer and internet use, individualized support from special educator and rehabilitator, speech therapists, and consultative and advisory support to parents. These are the four services we offer through the platform. And additionally, we organize workshops for parents and the topics uh, of the workshops are created together with the parents because our educators um, carefully listen to, to the parents and their needs. And whenever they need uh, more elaboration on some topic, we organize the workshops. My colleagues, the special educators and the speech therapists create uh, every day create digital content and tools to support service provision. Uh, in the platform, we have a library that every educator has access to it. There are video and audio materials, interactive content in order to keep the child's attention, digital tools, picture books and applications, customized learning activities through play, educative games, and e-accessible content. The, uh, the educators have access to all the materials. They can share, uh, they can, uh, but, uh, but also parents are allowed to enter the e-library and to take uh, resources they need so they can work with uh, their children. Now I wanna show you some of the materials we use. Uh, this is a educational, uh, accessible educational game created in uh, Life to Austria, and we localized it here in Macedonia and Albania. And children with this game uh, acquire knowledge about shapes, forms, letters, numbers, uh, and things like that. My colleagues uh, make resources by themselves. Uh, and some of the resources are like uh, storytelling. Uh, some of them are only to fill uh, some empty spaces so they can acquire 
and literacy skills. Here, something else at the end of at the end of the successful um, uh, successful exercise with the child, they get reward. But you, I, I have prepared one video so you can see that these are mathematical resources for gaining mathematical skills. And the early stimulative um, intervention, it, was, it is very difficult to, um, uh, to be exercised online. So again, the key partner here are uh, the parents of the children with disabilities and the educators advise them how to uh, um, adjust some things that they have in their homes so they can make didactical tools and their children can, uh, can work. But of course, parents are here the most loyal assistants. Now I want to share the video I have prepared. Uh, it is on Macedonian, so you can hear the interpretation from the interpreters. And because it's too long, I will share only a sequence of it. Good afternoon, Maya. How are you? Good afternoon. Great. How are you? I'm great. Are you ready to work today? Yes, great. Let's begin. Let's start with our first exercise for today. Today we are going to read short sentences and there is a picture at the end. This is our third level. Before uh, you read syllables and words and now we will read sentences. Can we begin? Yes, we can. Can you see the picture on your screen? Yes, I can. Great. Let's start with the first word. Mama. Uh, it reads ma. And there is another ma. Mama. What's that? What, what does it mean? Mama. Okay, let's read the second word. This one? Yeah. This one. Can you see the one that I colored? Ima. Great, excellent. Well done. What have we read so far? Mama Ima. Mommy has. Great. Well done. There is one big take for the first sentence. Let's read the second one. That was, do you hear me? <laughs> okay, I will go back to my presentation. Margarita, we don't hear you. You don't hear me? No, we don't have a sound. Oh my God. Or maybe I do. No. Sorry, it was my fault. Now you hear me? Yes. Okay. So here we have interactive content, the accessible content, customized materials in order to improve the literacy. The focus is on maintaining attention and interest during the class. The educator works uh, on those difficulties that the child faces every day and continuously manages to maintain what has been achieved and uh, to improve certain functionalities of the child. During the online class, the educator uses games, alleviates the pressure because the child needs to feel comfortable, relaxed, and to be confident. Parents actively participate in the classes, follow the directions given by the educators, and provide additional support 
to the child at home. What uh, we have a research that we've made because the platform is functioning for, uh, for a year and two months now. And we made a research uh, in September, but I didn't put any number <laughs> in my presentation. But uh, the, the research showed it was uh, very positive. We, we were positively surprised that the research showed that the parents are satisfied, the children acquire, acquired the knowledge that, um, uh, that they increased the attention, they uh, encouraged personal, uh, they were encouraged to receive personal development. Uh, acquired mathematical and literacy skill, the uh, skills, the improved cognitive skills, speech and communication. Margarita, sorry to interrupt you, but we only see the first slide of your presentation. Is how, how come? Really? Now it's changed something? No. Okay, I will put it again. And we have another... Uh... One, one and a half minutes to okay. wrap up. Okay, yes. I am at the end. Oops. Here, yes. Okay. And the, they uh, gain knowledge for computer use. So, uh, we, uh, to be able to provide services uh, to children, and their families throughout the country, Open the Windows team promoted the online service provision to the national and local officials, aiming to alleviate the existing gap of lack of services provision in the country, not only to cover the COVID situation, but to cover this existing gap that in smaller towns, in the rural areas, there are no service provision at all. So with this platform, even though when the pandem pandemic ends, we can use this platform to alleviate this gap. We, uh, we um, uh, presented the online platform in front of the national and local authorities and the Ministry for, uh, of Education and Science and the Ministry of uh, Labor and Social Affairs um, showed interest. And uh, especially the Ministry for, social, um, for Labor and Social um, uh, policy, uh, show dedication to support the team to train daycare centers and preschool staff to use the platform uh, in giving services to their beneficiaries. So uh, we trained last month, we trained um, 80 professionals uh, to use the platform and we are expecting that uh, we will cover more children with uh, disabilities throughout the country with uh, their involvement. Now uh, we are working hardly uh, to um, establish cooperation, hard, not, not hardly, we work hard to establish cooperation with the municipalities to support the platform so it will, ha uh, so it will have complete sustainability. Thank you very much. Thank you, Margarita. Uh... Uh, it was a complimentary uh, presentation to the previous one from Borislava because we saw uh, a live example of what, uh, how we can use online tools to, to provide the services. Uh, we will come back with uh, some questions on this issue, but I would like to invite, uh, thank you all for your presentations. They were great presentations. Uh, a lot of material and uh, thoughts and uh, reflections to be done uh, on, on these issues, especially from uh, policymakers. Uh, I would like now to invite everybody to, to, to present their questions, even in Macedonia, and if, they, if this is more easy for you. And uh, the translators will, uh, will make the appropriate uh, translation to these questions. Uh, there is also a question that has been already uh, answered in the Q&A uh, section, but I would like to present it here as well for, the, for, the, for those who didn't see it. Uh, the question was addressed to Malidom, Zagreb, and it was related to the referrals. From where do they get the referrals? Are they, uh, have, do they have the referrals only from uh, 
hospitals or uh, do they also have from primary health protection level, local health centers, etc. And the question uh, and the answer from Malidom was uh, from uh, Anna. Anna, maybe you would like to to yeah. take the floor. Okay, okay. Yes. Yeah. So most of the referrals we receive from medical uh, centers, but because we had many projects and we were we are recognized. Uh, for our work, but we also have referrals from primary service care, pediatricians and nurses and parents can uh, also call if they are concerned and come by themselves and through also through social workers, psychologists or from kindergartens, etc. We have that kind of referrals when they enter to our center. They uh, enter through assessment to, to, in which we establish if they are eligible for our early intervention. If they are eligible, we are writing a recommendation. And with that recommendation, the ministry, the local social welfare provides positive note and they can enter the program of early intervention. Thank you very much, Anna. Now, uh, I think that uh, this uh, panel gave us uh, a lot of uh, very qualitative examples of provision of ECI services. We, we could identify the common threats in, uh, in all the services uh, related to involving the families, to have a transdisciplinary approach to the need for uh, quality standards and uh, centrally organized uh, legislation framework. Uh, I think uh, for us who know each other, have had the chance to cooperate and network with each other, this exchange of good practice is also very important. Now, I would like to come, uh, because I don't see any other questions from the, from the attendees, so I would like to come with some uh, questions to the to the presenter to the presenters and i would like to start from margarita from the last one um i would like to ask you margarita uh okay you answered already how well it was received from parents but how how expensive it is to maintain uh up this platform updated because we also we all have some kind of uh, opportunities to develop a platform through a project or something like that but the most difficult part is to maintain and have updated services through this platform. So I would like to have your experience on that. Mm -hmm. uh, as I said at the beginning, uh, we received um, the platform as a uh, readily prepared uh, um, um, product. So um, we didn't pay anything to, um, we didn't pay anything, but now uh, we are paying uh, 500 euros per month for its maintenance to the company that um, has created it. So um, we are uh, paying it through the project, but now we are convincing the municipality that this is the municipalities that this is the way that the service provision um, can be done uh, in a way so they can uh, so they can continue uh to pay for 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 this uh for, for the maintaining of the platform but you also mentioned some uh, personnel eh? you you mentioned three operators that are working for this platform yes it's not it's a, it's an expensive uh, it, is, it, is. it is for 200 children and 250 uh, parents that are receiving support. We have engaged nine educators and um, everything per month is 6,000 euros. It is, not, uh, it is not too much uh, for several uh, municipalities, for example. <laughs> Thank you very much, Margarita. Thank you. So I would uh, now would like to go to Borislava and uh, ask ask you Borislava how how difficult what resistance did you face from parents in uh, adding online services um, because for you if I understand correctly the same professionals that were providing the the the, the live uh, services were the ones that were providing online services as well. So did you did you have any resistance from parents in adding this online provision of services or from staff as well? Did they feel a little bit, this is the question. Uh, 
thank you for the question. Yeah, no, maybe first for the parents. Uh, um, what uh, helped us uh, was that we have already uh, built strong relationship with these parents. Each ECI professional has personal uh, connection with um, with the supported families, and in first days of uh, pandemic, through phone calls, the discussion with the parents. Um, and uh, we decided how to transform the, the ACI uh, support, not to stop, just to find the proper way where in Skype, Facebook, uh, Messenger or Viber. Uh, we, we, we select the, proper, the most proper variant together with the families. Uh, what help us also is that um, our co AC consultation are mobile, uh, are mobile services and these mobile services uh, are also a type of uh, uh, consulting the family how to work and support the family. The ECI the professional didn't work directly with the child. We support the parent online or offline. And uh, this was uh, for us very helpful that from offline, we just moved the offline support in online. The role for the parent was the same. He know that is our the, the most uh, the most powerful partner for us in these tasks. And for the team, uh, definitely the challenges may uh, maybe were more because um, the profile of our teams is very different, and some of the professionals uh, are not so. so um, with, uh, didn't have such type of uh, experience with different platforms. And we focused uh, uh, on these people and support them uh, with um, supervision and on, um, uh, with regularly team meeting uh, on topics, mainly in digital area. Thank you very much. So, we see that in order to have a successful uh, online provision of service, we need to create a culture of uh, family participation in the service provision. Mm -hmm. huh? yeah. This is the line. Thank you very much. Help us. Can I ask a question? Uh, of course, who raised uh, Mirella? Uh, Marianne. Ah, Marianne. Like a good pupil, I raised my hand. <laughs> And I didn't, want, I didn't want to write the question. <laughs> um, I'm so sorry. I wanted to, to ask a question to Margarita. Uh, and I, I was wondering, because uh, we also uh, provided the same online uh, services last year, uh, and we also made a platform, uh, why did you only use uh, special education and speech therapists? Because uh, my... Um, experience as a psychologist is that um, it's important that the whole team uh, works online with the family and not only the speech therapist but also say occupational therapist uh, who could uh, support uh, the work he had he or she had been doing uh, face to face uh, working with the parents like uh, Boslava <laughs> said um, uh, a psychologist, I think, are very important to work with the parents and especially to work with the disappointment. Uh, we uh, understood that the parents feel that uh, all of a sudden everything, what they had in mind, the program all of a sudden stopped and no one is, be able, is able to go to the home or they use uh, masks or, I mean, there's a lot of emotional uh, support needed for these families. And also, I agree with what my previous uh, um, uh, uh, talker said. Also, uh, supervision is very important. It's important for, I think, for, especially for people <coughs> who are working online, uh, because it's so difficult. I mean, it's, it's a challenge. It's much more difficult than working face-to-face. -face. They need support. Uh, the speech therapist needs support, but especially the special educators, they need support because it's something, it's not the same, it's different. It's completely different from working face-to-face uh, -face, uh, because there is a screen in between and you cannot do anything. I mean, if you had a child. We uh, uh, 
I don't know, you heard something that I said or? So we did, but now we can hear you better. Yes, uh, the donor, um, uh, the donor had another programs that uh, included psychological support. So that's why we didn't uh, include psychological support because in few projects, units of project, there, there, there was psychological uh, lines, online support for parents. So we were uh, strictly directed to service provision for uh, from special educators and um, speech therapists. Uh, when it comes to supervision, uh, we, um, selected educators that are uh, especially uh, recognized in the community that are good uh, in service provision, but they are good in, with, also with technology. So um, they, uh, we have coordinator, my colleague, Maria Velinovska Velkovska is here among the attendees. She coordinates the entire process. They meet every Monday, uh, once a week and they talk about the challenges, they talk about the things they face uh, during uh, the entire week. If there is uh, some, uh, if, if there is raised questions, they solve, solve it together. Thank you, Margarita. Now we have an, a couple of minutes left before we introduce the, our next speaker. So uh, I would like to address a question to Englantina. Uh, and it's related on, on the, uh, how do you, how do families learn about you? Do they come early enough in the service? Do they reach you? Do they do you have community support to uh, to, to to disseminate the, the existence of the ECI provision? Because in some countries this is a major issue. Pa parents do not learn on time, early enough on the of the of the service. Uh, yes. Because, uh, as I mentioned at my presentation, we do have a uh, uh, close cooperation with uh, early uh, early education institutions, because we work in, uh, with them, we cooperate with them, and we uh, we help them how to identify this. Uh, uh, development uh, challenges with the children, and they uh, they uh, report to us in case if they if they have cases of children that they they assume that might have uh, development uh, challenges, and they at that moment they address this uh, issue to the parents, and uh, and the parents contact uh, 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 with us. We do an uh, an assessment of the child with all the levels with um, it is done by the multidisciplinary team and uh, we pro we uh, project the intervention with uh, them but uh, also uh, we have our facebook page they know us because we have are an organization that uh, we are providing services since 23 years now and uh, we are well known uh, in uh, tirana and other cities uh, but also we try with trainings and other information to, to provide other information uh, for the parents uh, in order to encourage and strengthen the, the role of the parents. We have provided trainings uh, for the parents that uh, their children are identified that have a disability, but uh, more generally uh, uh, they come to us because of this uh, cooperation that we have with the kindergartens that we we are working with and we are uh, cooperating with. Thank you very much. Now we have a last question for uh, Theotokos. Uh, you have presented a very comprehensive uh, early detection system from, to, to, from the preschool uh, years. Now my question is related to the, to the reaction of the parents that will may face this uh, news for the first time uh the challenges that the children uh, this child is facing so the question is uh do you have any support system for these parents after they hear after they are informed on the on the on the challenges that the children is facing do you have a support system for the family or how do you follow up after uh, introducing the the results um if, if the parents, uh, through this uh, research uh, we do, uh, understand that their child is at risk, uh, of course, we 
then we start uh, spotting them. Uh, what the main difficulty we had uh, in regard to what our, my previous uh, talker said is that what we try to do is not wait until they, uh, the children come to us. I mean, we also have lo lots of referrals, people know us and uh, uh, the government knows us. But what we tried is to go to the kindergarten and to see all the, all the children. So some, the, the children at risk that we detected there, uh, if they are at risk, then we, we continue, we uh, support them and we propose to them further help, whatever this means. I mean, it can be speech only or occupational therapy only or infant parent psychotherapy, that's something um, that, I mean, it's, it's a little bit different from all the other ECY programs. Uh, which means that especially we are very, uh, it's, it's, we are very uh, protective for also for these parents and we, uh, we really try uh, for them to understand that their child, their child is at risk. This is why uh, all the, the consultation with the parents is done by the, by the uh, specialists that have uh, examined the child. And no, and we. This is one of the things we would like to uh, to work on in the handbook. How uh, can you uh, tell a, ch a parent that the child is at risk for a developmental delay or a, or emotional uh, difficulty? And how can the um, the teachers inform the parents that they have to find some help because something is wrong? They think something is wrong. This is very difficult, and this is why. We use the program for all children. I mean, only, of course, only the parents that want to uh, enroll in the program, they, um, uh, they fill in the questionnaires. Uh, because we saw in the beginning, it was difficult. The teacher said it's very difficult for us. We cannot say just to a parent, you have to go to see a, a psychologist. So this is why we started before that. Um, and we found the children that were at risk uh, and we, we supported the parents and we supported the whole family and we tried to refer the children to a specialized help if necessary, only if necessary. If not, we said to the, to the parents, you did a good job. And we, because all parents got feedback from the questionnaires they did, all parents, not only the parents with the children at risk, but all parents got a, a feedback from the results of the questionnaires. I don't know if this is what you asked. Okay. We have another question uh, in uh, in the chat, but it's in Croatian, so I can. I mean, it's another language I cannot uh, understand. So maybe the translator can help. I posted it on the chat. So the question is for Margarita, but uh, we don't have any other. Uh, maybe. Despite the online you see it in the chat. How, uh, what are the services, SAE services there are in uh, Macedonia? Sorry, can you say it again? Uh, beside the online platform, what kind of uh, ECE services there are in uh, Macedonia? In Margarita, maybe. No, for me, it's the question, but I'm thinking now because uh, the Open the Windows Association is not uh, so only specialized for this kind of services. So we started this service um, uh, one year ago. And uh, um, I must say that in our country, um, there are, are no um, uh, uh, structured services that are um, that are uh, offered by the state. But there are a few organizations that offer uh, uh, early uh, childhood intervention uh, services, um, but it's not supported by the state. Okay. So uh, I think we have to close this session. Uh, thank you all for your participation. Uh,
and uh, I would like now to, I think that uh, all the presentation will be forwarded to, to the attendees. Yes, uh, that's correct. Yeah, everybody will so, receive the presentation. Okay, so now I would like to give the floor to Irene from uh, ESPD. Uh, she will introduce us to the child guarantee and other relevant frameworks from ECI. So the floor is yours, Irene. Thanks a lot, Agapi. Uh, so I'm starting by sharing my screen. Please let me know if everything goes smoothly for you. Uh, yes, perfect. Okay, just... Uh, okay, now it should be full screen. Okay, so I introduce myself. I'm uh, Irene Bertana, I am uh, senior policy officer at, at ESPD and I work uh, mainly on uh, inclusive education and ECI. Uh, and I also facilitate uh, uh, the ECI member forum of ESPD. So, I mean, some of us, we know each other. Uh, today I will talk to you about, uh, as Agapi already said, uh, the relevant EU frameworks uh, uh, for ECI and also about uh, what the ASPD does uh, in terms of advocacy, so our aims there. Uh, basically, we have uh, three main framework now. One is the EU pillar of social rights and its action plan. The second one is the strategy on the rights of persons with disabilities. And the third one is the strategy on the rights of the child and the child guarantee, mainly the child guarantee, but it's part of this framework, but I will get there. Uh, so starting uh, uh, with the European Pillar of Social Rights, it uh, is a declaration that was published and, uh, and uh, approved by the Member States in 2017. Uh, basically, it has uh, uh, 20 principles uh, that are about, uh, indeed, social rights. Um, and uh, basically, as it is a declaration, uh, then uh, the extent of its implementation, it's really on the hands of the member states. But uh, in these uh, years, and in particular uh, with the new commission now, uh, there was a work to develop an action plan with concrete actions uh, that have been indicated to member states to implement the principles. And uh, for us, the most relevant is the first target, uh, which is about uh, employment, but uh, uh, as you probably know already, there is a big link uh, in the EU in between employment, the gender employment gap, uh, and so early childhood education and care. So there is uh, since uh, uh, years, a lot of years already, uh, in the, for example, in the targets for 2020, there was already a high provision of early childhood education and care. This is interesting for us because uh, it is a hook to start talking as well about uh, a series of principles in how to do uh, early childhood education and care, and also about to talk about uh, early childhood intervention. Um, I will move now to the strategy on the rights of persons with disabilities. This was published as well in March for this, of this year. And uh, um, it is a very uh, ambitious and interesting uh, um, document uh, communication, which has a lot of ambition. Uh, as you can see, there are seven flagships initiatives, so big initiatives, uh, um, and then 57 commission actions and 33 calls uh, uh, for the member state to act. Um, for us, uh, the, the most interesting, you see uh, the priority areas in the left area of the screen. The most interesting for us in this moment, uh, uh, in, for our purpose, is uh, uh, the uh, area four about uh, equal participation and non-discrimination, uh, which includes as well uh, a, a chapter, an area, uh, on uh, inclusive education and inclusive early childhood education and care. Uh, before going there, I must say that in general, it is a bit disappointing that uh, the strategy doesn't address directly early childhood intervention. It talks about uh, quality services, it talks about deinstitutionalization, it talks about independent living, 
uh, but uh, uh, it will be really up to our uh, advocacy uh, capacity at UN national level to make uh, emerging uh, a higher, a stronger ECI uh, dimension. Nevertheless, uh, thanks to the work uh, of uh, um, the working group of the Commission on uh, Early Childhood Education and Care, uh, where EASPD is a member and uh, uh, our colleague team was very active in the last years, there was the development of a toolkit for inclusion in early childhood education and care. And there you, we can find a lot of principles that are very interesting and useful for us. Um, because, I mean, it is about generally inclusion. So uh, the target groups are not only children with disabilities, it's also migrants, it's every vulnerable children. But there is a chapter on children with disabilities. Um, there is a part on the policies which benefit children and families. Also practices. Uh, and we have uh, um, some, a, a chapter on supporting early intervention and direct references to early childhood intervention, for example, in a law uh, in Slovenia that uh, is uh, creating a system of uh, ECI services for children with special needs, and this was uh, done in between 2017 and 2018, and also the guidebook for professional that was developed in the framework of the Agora project uh, and then translated in many languages is one of the resources mentioned there. So it is quite interesting for us. Uh, another interesting point is that uh, um, in between the paradigms uh, about uh, uh, family involvement, this is uh, something that is very strong. So many of the principles of ECI are there. So parents are the primary educator of their children. Uh, of course, there is a link in between the UN Convention and the rights of the child. Uh, they need to participate in all aspects of the child's education and they need encouragement and support. So uh, for uh, uh, the strategy for the moment, that's where we are. Of course, there is a lot about inclusive education, which starts with inclusive early childhood education and care. Uh, but uh, basically, that's it. So I would move now to the strategy on the right of the child, just to give you, again, a little uh, uh, information about it. This was published in the end of March. March was a very busy month for the EU. Uh, and uh, uh, as uh, uh, one of the six pillars, we have the right to, of children to realize their full potential, no matter their social background. And the key action there is the child guarantee. The child guarantee was published with a proposal for a council recommendation, which means that the commission makes a proposal and then the member states have to say to agree on that and uh, it's up to them then the implementation, the, the council recommendation gives a framework for the state to create reforms. And then we have a staff working document, which is quite interesting as well, with challenges and responses about child poverty in, and uh, social exclusion in the EU. There was a long preparatory action leading to the child guarantee, which started uh, around uh, 2015. Um, with a proposal from, uh, from, the, from the parliament. And then the commission did a feasibility study, target groups starting to emerge. Um, then there was a work on the economic implementing framework and some pilot projects. And all along 2020, there was a, a big consultation uh, with civil society and service providers where we were also involved. There are... Uh, um, different target groups for the child guarantee and one of them is children with disabilities and we also have uh, children in alternative especially institutional care so there are uh, uh, quite interesting uh, hooks for us uh, to uh, uh, call for uh, reforms uh, in the member states uh, for example for ECI and many other services for children with disabilities. Um, the child guarantee is an holistic approach, but there are a few services that are uh, targeted in the child guarantee. So we have uh, the access to early childhood education and care, education and school-based activities, at least one healthy meal each day at school, healthcare, and then effective access, meaning that uh, it's not completely free, 
uh, to healthy nutrition in general and adequate housing. In the area of ECC and education, um, we can find again some uh, uh, interesting uh, principles that can be uh, also applied to the area of ECI. We don't have an explicit reference to it because uh, the focus is really on making education in general inclusive and uh, early childhood education and care inclusive. But still, we can see that in general the principles are very positive and uh, uh, there is also, uh, which is very interesting, the part about cooperation with school, local communities, social services and social economy actors to support inclusive education. Uh, and also uh, the idea of uh, having uh, not only qualified teacher, but also other educational professionals. So uh, um, a different uh, multitasking uh, um, team to support the children. In the area of healthcare and housing, we have uh, rehabilitation and habilitation services for children with disability, which also could be used with ECI services. Uh, and in the area of adequate housing, we have the prevention from being placed in institutional care, which again can be easily connected to the need to develop ECI system. Uh, in, um, as a, as a precondition to the, to the creation of reforms to implement the child guarantee, there is also the, the creation of enabling national policy frameworks with a lot of different uh, criteria, as you can see. Uh, the most interesting for us, in my opinion, I mean, there is the, the territorial dimension, which is quite interesting because it talks about rural areas. Um, but uh, um, below you can see the strategic investment in quality services for children, including in enabling infrastructure and qualified workforce. The framework for implementation. So, uh, and um, I, um, I don't I won't take so much time uh, after this, uh, we are in the end of the presentation, just to reassure you. Um, we have, uh, um, from the moment of the adoption uh, of the recommendation, which is uh, foreseen for June, so for the 15th, uh, 14th of June in the Council uh, of the Ministers of Labour and Social Affairs. Uh, after that, the mem if the proposal stays the same, but it should, uh, the member states will have six months to draft national action plans. In these national action plans, there will be uh, an indication of the target categories of services, the targets that the member state need to reach, the measures or the reforms, the necessary financial resources and timelines, um, and uh, yeah, well, other measures, and the national framework for data collection, monitoring, and evaluation. Um, so this is a big opportunity for uh, um, the parts of uh, the civil society that want to be involved uh, in this process to participate to the process also because uh, one of the principles is really about the participation of civil society so there are a few steps uh, that can be done since uh, june in order to be part of this process to advocate for eci to be included in the measures uh, and in general to be informed about the process uh, both in the part of implementation, but also in the monitoring. At the, at the same time, at European level, the Commission and the Social Protection Committee will develop a common monitoring framework. And this framework will be integrated in the semester. And there, the in most interesting part is that uh, uh, there will be uh, the, the, the creation of indicators. So in the creation of indicators, of course, it means uh, uh, where the EU is uh, putting the light and, and what kind of things they are measuring to see if the child guarantee is uh, uh, implemented. And also in this sense, we are very interested in the part of this process. Uh, just to finish, there, there, there are a lot of uh, uh, funds that are mentioned to help the implementation of the child guarantee. Uh, in the right part of the slide, you can see the, the, the horizontal principles uh, uh, that are part uh, of these different funds. So the inclusion of children with disabilities is part of that. The institutionalization is part of that. Access to quality and non-segregated inclusive education is part. And uh, uh, quality and non-segregated childcare, child 
social and healthcare services. So again, there is a lot of uh, space for uh, attracting EU funding to create ECI uh, services and system at national level. Um, so yeah, this is the last slide. Uh, just a reminder, uh, the, the, the EPSCO Council, so this council I was mentioning, will uh, uh, possibly approve uh, the child guarantee on the 14th of June. And then we will have these two EU and national levels uh, involved. Uh, as, as the SPD, we are, uh, we, we are willing to be involved uh, in both levels and to help our members uh, in, uh, uh, that, that are interested in, um, in advocating at national level because it's a quite uh, big opportunity for you. So we will uh, uh, develop a toolkit with some information on how this can be done. And uh, yeah, that's it. Thanks a lot. Irene, thank you very much for this presentation. Uh, as always, uh, it's quite uh, difficult to um, find out what exactly the Commission wants and says, so it's very helpful for all of us to have a detailed approach uh, on this uh, material. And also it's a call for action for all of us uh, in order to be able to, to, to take advantage of this, uh, of this uh, framework. Uh, it was a very good idea what you have proposed that there is a material, a toolkit that will enable us to advocate in a more homogeneous way uh, in relation to the ECI, because I think this will uh, even uh, more uh, support uh, our uh, re requests. And uh, so thank you very much for this. Now I would like to give the floor to Vasilka and close uh, to close this uh, very interesting uh, workshop. Uh, Vasilka. Thank you, Agapi. Thank you for your uh, effort the, uh, to manage, to moderate the whole session uh, of this uh, event. Thank you to all participants. Thank you to, thanks uh, to all the presenters. Uh, we had a real opportunity to hear uh, different practices uh, from the region. Uh, unfortunately, the Macedonia, people from Macedonia had the opportunity to ask uh, questions on their language, but uh, maybe next time when we, or, uh, we will have opportunity to organize in person uh, this uh, uh, event, uh, they will be encouraged. However, uh, we, we saw that uh, uh, early childhood intervention is uh, as a topic, is a big challenge for all of us. Uh, professionals and families, but also uh, it is a big challenge for the society. And obviously our Balkan region uh, is faced with uh, another challenge. It is uh, development of the, the, the challenge of development uh, of a good structure for early childhood intervention. So we need a strategy that is obvious uh, uh, to improve the, the existing uh, services and to develop uh, new uh, models of services. Uh, thank you, Irene, for presenting the uh, EU frames uh, for the early childhood intervention that we can use as a tool to develop, to improve our national models, our national strategies, uh, our standards for the services. Um, This uh, event is a good uh, uh, opportunity also for uh, uh, creation of network to, um, to straighten the, the network that we have, we, we already have uh, within the um, ESPD. Actually, the member forum of uh, early childhood intervention is, uh, I'm very proud that is uh, stronger and stronger every year, uh, more and more. So, uh, I really expect that in the next period of uh, uh, till the, the, the next uh, uh, Balkan uh, provider forum, we will have uh, more members uh, within our member forum of uh, early childhood intervention. The key words that we he uh, heard today, it is uh, support and development for the support of the services, for the support of the families, for the support of uh, um, 
professionals, uh, we need uh, to work together uh, to raise awareness relating the topic of early childhood intervention. Uh, that is the, the, the uh, great uh, importance for the development of the uh, focus of our work, the child. On the other hand, we need uh, uh, different profiles of professionals to work together. Collaboration between professionals, different profiles of professionals, but also uh, training for uh, professionals uh, uh, to have uh, basic uh, knowledge about the early childhood intervention. We need uh, uh, awareness about uh, essential need for collaboration between uh, parents and professionals to, be, to have a, a, a honest uh, collaboration without uh, uh, sharing information, sharing symptoms, uh, without uh, any um, um, stigma and uh, prejudice. I'm very happy that we heard uh, two positive examples uh, uh, for uh, uh, services during the pandemic period. Uh, it is, uh, for me, uh, it is very encouraging because uh, uh, in the period of pandemia, uh, we, 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 all of us, we, we have been faced with uh, social isolation. Uh, social isolation is something uh, uh, very known, uh, 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 everyday practice for people and families uh, uh, who have a member with disability. But uh, in the period of pandemia, all of the, uh, the whole world was faced with social isolation. At least the, uh, this is the, the momentum that we can use in our, uh, in creation of our campaigns uh, to raise awareness about uh, the need for uh, social inclusion of people with disability, especially acceptance of the children in uh, every segment of uh, our living. So uh, I would like to thank again to all of you and uh, uh, to, to thank to ESPD uh, to, uh, that give us uh, support to and encourage us to, to organize the second edition of the Balkan Regional uh, Forum, uh, Provider Forum. Uh, and um, I, I hope that, as I already said, I hope that uh, uh, we can have opportunity next year to meet each other uh, in person uh, on this event and to, to establish some uh, joint programs uh, in order to improve the situation uh, for the early childhood intervention system in our Balkan region. Thank you again, and I wish you uh, a nice uh, afternoon. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.